Okay, so we're going to continue our look at solving quadratic equations with section 5.5. Five. And this one's called completing the square. This is one other way to solve quadratic equations. So just as a quick little recap and refresher of where we've been and where we're going to go. I told you that there's four different ways in chapter 5 that you can solve a quadratic equation. An equation that's got an x squared term in it. The first one we looked at was graphing, and that was when you looked at the x-intercepts of a quadratic function that gave you the zeros, or the roots, of the corresponding quadratic equation. The next thing we looked at was factoring, and we talked about the zero product property, where you can get two factors to multiply together to equal zero. Today, we're going to look at solving using square roots, and related to that, this method called completing the square. Okay, and then there's a fourth method that we'll get into in the next section. All of these will work for most quadratics. Some will be more convenient than others, depending on which equation or the form of the equation you're given in a problem. So that's why I want to show you all of them, so you can choose the best one, depending on the situation that you come across in a problem. Okay, so let's look at an example. We're going to solve for x the equation x squared minus 12x plus 36 equals 25. Now, up till now... The best thing you could do for methods 1 and 2 is you would get one side of the equation equal to 0 and either factor or graph and go from there. But if you notice, x squared minus 12x plus 36, that is what we call a perfect square tri trinomial. If you're to factor this, you can factor this already without moving that 25 over. And what you get is, so when we factor the left side, x minus 6 squared equals 25, because if you were to unfoil that out, you'd get x squared minus 12x plus 36. This is a pattern that we saw a couple sections ago when we were looking at factoring perfect square trinomials. So now that we have something squared equals a number, we can actually solve this equation using this form given to us right here. And the way we're going to do that is by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. We're basically going to undo the squaring on the left hand side so that we can work with the x minus 6. Okay, So these kind of cancel each other out and we're left with x minus 6 equals 5. But not just 5. Notice what I wrote there in yellow. Plus or minus 5. See, since we're dealing with an equation and since we don't know what the value of x is, we have to add this plus minus thing because it's possible that it could be negative 5 squared over on the left side. x minus 6 could be positive 5, because 5 squared is 25. But x minus 6 can also be negative 5, because negative 5 squared is also 25. So don't forget that. The way you can remember that as well is the fact that since it's a quadratic, you know you have to have two solutions. So the way we get the two solutions is through the positive and the negative 5. So here's what I mean by that. If we split this up, now we can write two separate equations x minus 6 equals 5, and x minus 6 equals negative 5, and then solve each of them for x, and then we get x is 11, and x is negative 1. So that's our two solutions to this equation. Okay, let's try another one. So we have x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 20. Now again, prior to today, you would get one side equal to 0. But what I'm telling you is if you look at the left-hand side already, you can see that x squared plus 8x plus 16 is a perfect square, so we'll try to use our square root method. We'll factor the left, and that's x plus 4 quantity squared now equals 20. Take the square root of both sides, so we can cancel out the squared on the left, and we get x plus 4 equals plus or minus, well let's break down the square root of 20 to be 2 root 5, so x plus 4 equals plus or minus 2 root 5. And then again, two separate equations one for the positive 2 root 5, and one for the negative 2 root 5. And then we can solve each of these for x, so x equals negative 4 plus 2 root 5, and x equals negative 4 minus 2 root 5. And then if you want, you can go to your calculator and get decimals for each of those. I did that for you. So we get 0 0.472 and negative 8.472 would be our two solutions. Or you could leave it in this form as well with the radicals. These are actually the exact answers, and then these are the approximates because we're going to a decimal, but either one I would accept. 
Okay? There's a couple practice problems now. I want you to give those a try from your note sheet. Uh, pause the tape, rewind it if you need to, and then come back and we'll talk about some other examples. Okay, so now we want to think about what happens if we aren't given a perfect square. The first couple problems I gave you, the left-hand side was already a perfect square trinomial. We could factor, take the square root, and go from there. But we're not always going to be that lucky and get a perfect square. Well, this is where the second half of this section comes in, this method called completing the square. There is a way that we can transform any quadratic equation so that it's going to look like it has a perfect square trinomial, even if we weren't given it to, it that, given it to us that way. Okay, so let's look at, for instance, x squared plus 16x equals 9. All right, well, the left-hand side is not a perfect square. It does have a GCF, but remember, if we were to try to factor the left-hand side, we couldn't do it and, you, and get a solution because we don't have two things multiplying to give us 0. If we factor x squared plus 16x equals 9, we get two things multiplied to give us 9. We've already talked in class about how that's not that beneficial to us in solving the equation. But instead, let's think about what we can perhaps add right over here to the left-hand side that could turn this into a perfect square. And there's a rule that will help us turn any quadratic into a perfect square trinomial. And here's what you do. You're going to add one-half of b squared to both sides of this equation up here in order to figure out how we're going to turn this into a perfect square. So b is 16. So we do 1 half of 16 squared. That's 8 squared, which is 64. So if I add 64 to both sides of this equation, I'm now going to get a perfect square on my left-hand side. But remember, you have to add to both sides. Otherwise, the equation doesn't hold anymore. So we get x plus 8 quantity squared equals 73. Square root both sides, and we solve like we did the last couple examples. x plus 8 is plus or minus root 73. So x plus 8 is positive root 73, and x plus 8 is negative root 73. We move the 8 over, and we get our two solutions. Okay? Let's look at one more. x squared plus 10x minus 11 equals 0. Now, in order for completing the square to work, we need to move the 11 over, okay? You have to have it in the form like I wrote here, ax squared plus bx equals c, in order to actually complete the square. If you already have a constant on the left, like we had with the negative 11, completing the square won't work, okay? So let's figure out now, what can we add to x squared plus 10x to get a perfect square? Well, we do 1 half of 10 squared, which is 5 squared, or 25. So now if we rewrite the problem to be x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 36, we can then factor and get x plus 5 quantity squared equals 36. Okay. Now we want to undo the squaring on the left, so we take the square roots of both sides. This one turns out to be a nice square root. We get x plus 5 equals positive and negative 6. We rewrite and break down the plus minus. We have our two equations and x is 1, and x is negative 11. Okay? So now you have a couple more examples like that. Give those a try, where you're actually going to do the 1 half b squared in order to get a perfect square trinomial, the actual completing the square piece. Rewind the tape if you need any questions answered, and when you're ready for the last couple problems, come on over. Okay, so now we have to talk about what happens if the quadratic has a leading coefficient greater than 1. So far, everything we've looked at is x squared. a has always been 1. Well, like I have just written up there for you, if a is bigger than 1, you have to actually divide by a. So there's two little catches to completing the square. The first catch, you can't have a constant on the left side. The second catch, a has to be 1. So here's an example. 2x squared plus 5x plus 7 equals 0. So if you get something much more general, this is as general as it's going to come in terms of using completing the square. This is a great problem because everything you need to do in order to use completing the square is in this problem. So focus very carefully on what's happening here. First step, I already have a constant on the left side. I don't want that. I have to bring it over to the other side. 
But before I do that, let's divide everything by 2. Now that I've gotten a by itself, or rather a to be 1, I want to take this constant 7 halves and move it over to the right hand side. x squared plus 5 halves x equals negative 7 over 2. Okay. Now we are able to complete the square. We're going to take 1 half of 5 halves and square it. So that's 5 fourths. We square that and we get 25 over 16. So that's what we need to add now to both sides of this equation in order to get a perfect square on the left. x squared plus 5 over 2x plus 25 over 16 equals negative 7 halves plus 25 over 16. Let me go back a little bit. I went a little too fast on the animation. Okay, so there you go. Now, we need to add these up. You're going to have to get like denominators or you can put them in your calculator, and you get x squared plus 5 halves x plus 25 over 16 equals negative 31 over 16. This is a perfect square. It factors to x plus 5 fourths squared equals negative 31 over 16. Now you might be asking yourself, especially when there's such a big fraction like this, how am I able to factor this so quickly? Well, if you notice, and I can't really go back to all the problems because of the software that I'm using to make the video, but you could do this if you want on your own. If you notice, the number that is always here is always one half of b. It always has been that way. And why? Because that's the way we set this up for completing the square to work. One half of five halves is five fourths. That's why it's going to be x plus five fourths squared here. Okay? Just so you're curious of why I'm seeing this so quickly. It's, it's, it's for that reason. So now we want to get rid of the quantity squared on the left, so we'll take the square roots of both sides. x plus 5 fourths equals, okay, when we take the square root of negative 31 over 16, let me show you how I got that answer so quickly. So you've got to take a square root of the top and the bottom when you square root a fraction. The square root of negative 31, well, we talked about this a couple sections ago when we were looking at imaginary numbers. First step is to take that negative 1 out, and we write that as an i, because i is the square root of negative 1. So it's i root 31 over the square root of 16, which is 4. So x plus 5 over 4, 5 over 4, excuse me, equals plus or minus i root 31 over 4. And then we can split it up, write our two separate equations, and solve. So we get negative 5 fourths plus i root 31 over 4 and negative 5 fourths minus i root 31 over 4. Okay, This is probably the most challenging of a completing the square problem. It's got everything in it. You've got to get the constant moved over. You've got to divide through by the a. There's some imaginary numbers when we take our square root. If you can do a problem like this, and I have some examples like this in your notes to try on your own, you can handle any kind of completing the square problem. Okay, Take a couple seconds to try the other practice problems that are in the notes. Watch the video again if you need to. I tried to keep this short, but I also didn't want to go too fast to confuse you either. Okay. With that, bring any questions to class, and I will see you in class.